Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Captain Pixarize and the entire crew, welcome aboard. This is your chief flight attendant here to welcome you on our state-of-the-art B-48 bomber plane. During this flight, I'll be instructing you on chylomicron metabolism, a metabolic pathway that involves the transport and delivery of dietary lipids. So, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats, fasten your seat belts, and prepare for departure. Now, before we get started, I want to encourage you not to get lost in the details of this pathway. Let the memory palace anchor you to the important steps and you'll be more than fine. Bon voyage! Before we dig into the details of chylomicron metabolism, let's briefly go over the entire process at a bird's eye level. Now, don't memorize this. Just think about it. The blood is primarily composed of water, which means that lipids, which are hydrophobic, cannot dissolve in it. The body, therefore, needs an alternate way to transport lipids in the body. And to accomplish this, the body uses lipoproteins. Lipoproteins are fat transport particles. They have a hydrophobic interior, where they can store lipids, and a hydrophilic exterior, making them soluble in the blood. If you break down the word lipoprotein, lipo refers to lipid, and protein refers to protein. So lipoproteins are just particles that are composed of both lipids and proteins. Easy, right? Now, the proteins they are themselves composed of are called apolipoproteins. So the word lipoprotein refers to the entire lipoprotein particle, and the word apolipoprotein refers to distinct proteins within the lipoprotein. The prefix apo actually means away from or separate. So this makes sense. Still with me? Good. This video focuses on the metabolism of a specific lipoprotein, the chylomicron which is used to transport dietary lipids throughout the body. Imagine you've just eaten a delicious, fatty steak. The fat in that steak travels through the GI tract to the duodenum of the small intestine. Here, it interacts with bile salts, which emulsify the fat into smaller lipid droplets, thereby increasing the fat's surface area. Pancreatic lipase can now come in and chop the larger triglycerides into smaller monoglycerides and free fatty acids, which are now small enough to be absorbed by the enterocyte. Once in the enterocyte, the structural apolipoprotein ApoB48 is lipidated by MTP. Once ApoB48 is loaded up with lipids, it is referred to as a chylomicron, which can now be secreted. Now, the chylomicron particle itself is too large to directly enter the circulation, so it is instead picked up by the lymphatic system via lacteals, The lacteals connect to the thoracic duct, which contains a fatty, milky substance known as chyle. So the word chylomicron simply refers to small, microscopic particles found in chyle. Next, the chylomicrons travel via the thoracic duct, which empties into the systemic circulation. Once in the circulation, apolipoprotein C2 can bind to lipoprotein lipase found in capillary beds. Lipoprotein lipase and apoc2 cleave the triglycerides, thereby releasing and delivering them to the tissues. After the chylomicron's contents have been delivered, the resulting chylomicron remnant is taken up by the liver via apolipoprotein E. Now that we've discussed the overall picture of this pathway, let's discuss each step in a bit more detail. First, take a look at the anchor for this scene, the chiropractor. For those of you who aren't in the know, chiropractors are basically just alternative medicine practitioners who work with the musculoskeletal system, especially the spine. And speaking of spines, take a look at how the chiropractor is cracking his patient's back. His patient is actually a high-ranking government official, which is why he flies everywhere on a B-48 bomber plane. And his many late nights spent hunched over a laptop going over important government documents have led to a ton of back problems. Anyway, the chiropractor should help anchor you to this image on chylomicron metabolism. Get it? A chiropractor for chylomicron? It's the chylomicron chiropractor. Chylomicrons carry dietary lipids from the intestines to the rest of the body, and they are composed primarily of triglycerides. Note, chylomicrons deliver exogenously derived lipids, in other words, dietary lipids, as opposed to VLDL, which delivers endogenously derived lipids that have been synthesized in the liver. Next, notice how our chiropractor's massage oils are packed in glass bottles. I know, fancy, fancy. But can you expect any less from an in-flight chiropractic session? 
These glass massage oils are here to help you remember triglycerides, the primary component of chylomicrons. At Pixerize, we like to call triglycerides triglycerides. So let these glass bottles filled with fatty oil remind you that chylomicrons carry exogenous triglycerides or exogenous triglycerides. Next, take a look at our surroundings. This chiropractic session is taking place in the middle of a flight on a B-48 bomber plane. The B-48 actually stands for apolipoprotein B-48, which is the main structural protein found in chylomicrons. In fact, there is one ApoB48 protein per chylomicron. ApoB48 is actually related to VLDL's ApoB100. In fact, ApoB48 is synthesized from the same gene that codes for ApoB100, but contains only 48% of ApoB100 sequence after mRNA processing. The missing sequence contains LDL binding domains, which is why chylomicrons must use ApoE for uptake and clearance. This is in contrast to other lipoproteins, like LDL, which can use ApoB100. But don't worry about this for now. We'll talk more about ApoE later. Now that we've discussed the location of our massage therapy session, let's disclose our chiropractor's secrets for a successful massage. Have you noticed how his patient is hooked up to a mysterious-looking mouthpiece? Well, that mouthpiece is actually part of his oxygen therapy treatment. It's all the rage in chiropractic circles these days, and planes always carry mouthpieces like this. How convenient. Anyway, let this mouthpiece remind you of MTP, which stands for Microsomal Triglyceride Transfer Protein. Get it? Mouthpiece for MTP? It's the MTP mouthpiece. Now that we've introduced our symbols for MTP and ApoB48, let's talk about what they actually do. Since MTP is a triglyceride transfer protein, it must transfer triglycerides to something, right? Right. MTP transfers triglycerides and cholesterol to ApoB48. And this makes sense, because remember, ApoB48 is the main structural protein found in chylomicrons. After lipidation, ApoB48 can now be called a chylomicron, and this chylomicron can be secreted from the intestines into the lymphatic system. It will make its way from the lymphatic system into the bloodstream, where it can deliver its triglycerides to the rest of the body. While we're here, I also want to briefly mention a disease affecting these steps. Mutation in MTP results in the disease A-beta lipoproteinemia, which is characterized by failure to lipidate ApoB48, and this causes ApoB48 to be rapidly degraded. Because ApoB containing chylomicrons can't be formed, A-beta lipoproteinemia leads to the sequestration of fat in the intestinal epithelia. The lack of beta lipoproteins, or B lipoproteins, is why A-beta is in the disease's name, A-beta lipoproteinemia. This, of course, then results in a lack of chylomicrons, and therefore a lack of triglycerides in the body, and a subsequent buildup of fat in the intestinal epithelia. For more information, check out our image on A-beta lipoproteinemia. Speaking of intestinal epithelia, did you notice how this oxygen delivery tube oddly resembles the intestines? Ugh, gross. I wouldn't want to be hooked up to a machine that resembles our intestines. Anyway, enough about me. These intestine-looking tubes should help reinforce the fact that chylomicrons are synthesized in the intestines. Because where else would dietary lipids come from? Next, let's talk about how triglycerides from chylomicrons are actually delivered to the rest of the body. Well, take a look at our chef here. He's using a butter knife to cut some butter pieces for the chiropractor. You see, this butter is a key ingredient for the special massage oils that the chiropractor needs. A good chiropractic session needs a good body butter, right? Alternatively, maybe our important government official is having a fancy in-flight meal prepared? Either way, the butter knife should remind you of lipoprotein lipase. The butter represents lipids, and the knife cutting them represents lipase. Putting this together, the butter knife represents lipoprotein lipase, which cleaves triglycerides and releases individual free fatty acids. Next, let the chef himself remind you of lipoprotein lipase's cofactor, APOC2. Get it? A chef for APOC. It's the APOC chef. After being secreted from the intestines and entering the bloodstream, nascent chylomicrons obtain APOC2 and APOE from HTL in the circulation after which they are called mature chylomicrons. ApoC2 on the chylomicron can then bind to lipoprotein lipase, and together they cleave and release triglycerides. 
These resulting free fatty acids can then be taken up by the body tissues. I'm mainly talking about adipocytes for storage and muscle for utilization. Got that? Homozygous mutations in lipoprotein lipase, or APOC2, may cause a disease called familial hyperchylomicronemia. On the other hand, heterozygous mutations in LPL and APOC2 may cause familial hypertriglyceridemia, which is similar to familial hyperchylomicronemia, but more mild. Both diseases are characterized by high triglyceride levels, since lipoprotein lipase and APOC2 can't break them down. For more information on these diseases, check out our respective images on familial hyperchylomicronemia and familial hypertriglyceridemia. Finally, take a look at the eels sucking on the patient's toes. I know it's pretty gross, but I guess the chiropractor is using these eels as a form of fish therapy. You know, the fish pedicure where little fish eat away at all your dead skin cells. I guess they couldn't find gubby fish and just use eels instead. Close enough. Anyway, these eels are our symbol for APOE. E for eel, get it? As with APOC2, chylomicrons obtained this APOE from HDL particles already in the circulation. After giving up their triglyceride contents, chylomicrons are now termed chylomicron remnants, and these remnants are removed from the blood via APOE. More specifically, APOE binds to receptors on the liver, which allows for the clearance of chylomicron remnants. Mutations in APOE can lead to the disease familial dis-beta lipoproteinemia, which is characterized by high levels of chylomicron remnants and IDL. For more information, check out our image on familial dis-beta lipoproteinemia. All right, that's all for chylomicron metabolism. Let's do a quick review before we call it quits. Chylomicron metabolism involves the absorption of dietary lipids by intestinal epithelial cells. ApoB48 is the key structural protein found in chylomicrons, and it is lipidated by the protein MTP. After lipidation, ApoB48 is full of triglycerides, and it is now termed a chylomicron. The chylomicron is next secreted from the intestinal epithelia, but it is too large to directly enter circulation. It is instead absorbed by the lacteals, where it travels by way of the thoracic duct before it is emptied into the systemic circulation. Once in the circulation, APOC2 binds to lipoprotein lipase in capillary beds. Together, they cleave and release the chylomicron's triglyceride content, which can now be delivered to the tissue. After the chylomicron's triglyceride content has been delivered, it is now termed a chylomicron remnant. The resulting remnant is then taken up by the liver via apolipoprotein E. Okay, it looks like this flight is about to land in its destination, and our government official is looking more refreshed than ever. Until next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.